welcome to this presentation of Soitro, an experimental tool for extracting and visualizing multimodal features from news videos. This work is embedded in the context of the Fake Narratives Project, which is a BMBF project that is a joint effort by the universities of Bremen, Hannover, and Leipzig. In this project, we try to compare narrative structures of disinformation in news reporting by analyzing various news videos from different news channels, including public broadcasting as well as private television stations and YouTube channels. Our analysis is based on concepts from discourse analysis and semiotics. In order to scale this analysis to a larger video corpus, our goal is to employ methods from machine learning and distant viewing to extract and visualize features that show certain patterns. To illustrate what we are looking for in this project in terms of narrative patterns, here is a simple example of a narrative strategy that is seen quite frequently in the German news format Tagesschau. We first have the presentation of some new topic, with the news anchor in front and the name of a certain person mentioned in the text caption behind him. In the spoken introduction for the ensuing report, the news anchor will then speak that very name. At this point, we already have two modalities, written text and spoken audio. The pattern is then followed by showing the actual person mentioned before in the news report. Often this will include a specific sequence of camera shots as shown here, that starts with wider shots and smaller faces, and then leads to closer shots that focus on the mentioned person. Sometimes this face will also be combined with the audio of an off-screen speaker that again mentions the specific person. This slide gives a more organized view of what we are looking for to describe these narrative patterns. On one level, we are looking for low-level features on a material level, such as image brightness, dominant colors, amount of movement in the video, and so on. On a more formal level, we are interested in concepts such as scene boundaries, camera and shot configurations, objects that are visible in the scene, faces and people that are visible in the scene, as well as dialogue and music. All of these things obviously can change over the course of the video and have a dynamic in themselves. Finally, based on these lower levels, we hope to describe, describe discourse elements like personalization, particularization and individualization as just seen in the example before and other patterns. So our overall goal in this project can be described as detecting recurring patterns in multiple videos that encompass different entities and modalities such as spoken text, written text, music, visible images, as well as faces, objects, and dialogues happening between people. Before I dive into some aspects of the test application we built, I want to talk shortly about existing tools for feature analysis in videos. There is, in fact, a substantial range of existing tools commonly used in the digital humanities community that support workflows centered around visualizing time-based features and patterns of videos. This slide presents a non-exhaustive list of some common tools. On the right, you see a screenshot of Anvil, which is the oldest tool in this list and originally stems from 2001. It shows a familiar layout of how these tools organize video features into different timelines. This is the approach we also took. Some of these tools, like Elan and Anvil, are focused on manual or semi-manual workflows. There is Vian and the Distant Viewing Toolkit, which is actually a library, not an application, and have more focus on automated workflows. Therefore, the latter most similar to our work, as they also aim to give users options to automatically extract features. There has also been some rather successful work in the digital humanities community using specific neural networks to analyze videos to recognize certain objects, for example. While all these tools are great in their own way, they lack the automatic extraction of features using more recent methods from deep learning. While we could have extended or combined these tools with new feature extractors, we decided for our experiments that we wanted to try out various visualizations and user interface options. And building a fresh tool specifically for the new features we extracted gave us this option. At the same time, our overall goal was not to build a new application or platform for video analysis as a whole. Let's talk a bit about the specific methods and features we used. First of all, we only used pre-trained neural networks. We didn't train any models ourselves, but only used off-the-shelf libraries, libraries and models that were available through public repositories. We applied face detection using a library called InsideFace, which not only detects faces, but also locates them in a high-dimensional space, making them comparable and clusterable. This library also offers landmark detection, which can be used for tracking various parts of the face, like nose, mouth, or eyes. 
Finally, we used a separate model for emotion detection. We also applied object detection using a standard pre-trained vision transformer model from Facebook. The largest area we worked in is text-based features. We performed automatic speech recognition, or ASR, which turns audio into machine-readable text, optical character recognition, or OCR, which turns text written on images into machine-readable text, and finally, image captioning, which describes in text form what is seen on an image, like Happy Dog or a Meadow. For ASR, we used Mozilla's Deep Speech Library with a model trained specifically for German because we had a German corpus. For OCR, we used the Easy OCR Library, which is a combination of the craft model, which stands for Rec Character Rec Region Awareness for Text Detection, uh, followed by a ResNet based model for the actual character recognition. Finally, we experimented with image text embedding, specifically CLIP, to quickly perform zero shot queries on the videos. Let me stress that our work should rather be seen as orthogonal to existing tools and applications and as an experiment on how utilizing recent multimodal feature extraction methods from deep learning, like the ones just described, can open up new possibilities for workflows. This is exactly what I want to demonstrate now in the rest of this presentation with the actual test application. One final remark. Note that all of this work happened in uh, 2022, and the field of deep neural networks has moved extremely fast since then. Newer and in some areas considerably better models have become available for various tasks. For example, for automatic speech detection and recognition, there is now Whisper by OpenAI, and for image captioning, there is now Blip2. I will guide you through three parts of StoryTrope. First, I will show you the corpus view, which lists all videos that are in a corpus and offer search features over the whole corpus. Second, I will show you how we visualized the text-based features and how we made them searchable. And finally, I will talk about various aspects of face detection and recognition and how we visualized these features. This is the corpus view. It presents a whole corpus of videos to the user. As you can see, the corpus here contains a few hundred videos. Under each video, there is a small movie barcode that allows quick distant reading of different faces and changes in the video's dominant colors over the course of the video. The thumbnail itself is interactive and allows previewing the video content by hovering the mouse over the thumbnail. The UI also gives an indication of the corresponding position in the movie barcode through a small red line. This combination allows users to quickly get a rough idea of longer coherent segments, segments and scenes in the video. The interface also provides a simple search function that fills us by the video's name and tags. More importantly, by switching on an additional search option, the system can perform deep full corpus searches inside the automatically extracted multimodal features. This is a German corpus, so let's search for the German terms in custom. The system now lists all matching videos and gives detailed information whether this term occurred as a spoken entity in the audio track, which is tagged as ASR for automatic speech recognition, or as a written text on the screen, which is tagged as OCR for optical character recognition. Note again that all these features are extracted automatically without any manual annotation. Let's now look into a specific video. The UI follows a track-based layout familiar from other video software. It basically lists all the features we have computed for this video. These features range from low-level features, such as, for example, thumbnails, color information, and audio information, such as audio amplitude and audio spectrum that gives that's an idea of which frequencies are free, uh, occur at a certain point. We also have some high-level features, or more high-level features, such as face count, for example, and face size. So for face size, let's look at this peak here. We see that it corresponds with a large face, and whereas uh, zero value basically corresponds to no face. We have another large face. Um, we also track all the faces that appear, um, identifying basically identities by clustering the faces. This is seen in this track here, where we get all the, the single faces. 
For this presentation, I want to focus on just these two feature types, text features and faces. For the videos in our corpus, we extracted three kinds of text information. First of all, ASR, automatic speech recognition, which tracks all the words that are spoken. And, and if we zoom in, we actually see that this is not an overlapping timeline. This is just due to the visualization, which tries to use the space. But if we really zoom in, we see that this is a linear um, arrangement of words. And we can go in and actually well, play back single words. Um, the same approach can be used for OCR, basically an optical character recognition, so words written on the image in the video. So um, let's pick some word here, and we can see in the corresponding annotation here in the video where this um, word actually came from in the video. So um, we basically have all this information that, that occurs as pixel data in, in the image as machine readable text here in this layer. And finally, we have captions, which try to describe what is seen in an image. And um, so sometimes this works, sometimes this doesn't. Let's just try, for example, this caption here, man in a suit and tie sitting at a table. Uh, hold on. OK, that's basically just a news anchor. Um, and maybe a man wearing a face mask. OK, that's obviously not correct, but um, it picked up the face mask. And sometimes it's actually a relationship woman holding a microphone in front of the city at night. Um, the system allows the user to perform searches on this data and thus obtain a more distant view. Um, such as happened in one or multiple tracks using terms that either exactly match some keyword or are somewhat similar when compared in the vector space of the fast text embedding. The latter approach allows fuzzy searches. So here uh, I select the audio track, um, the speech recognition track, and I just um, search for some term, let's say for the written. And I select that I don't want to have a verbatim or regular search, but actually a fuzzy search using fast text. And this produces a new track. And as soon as this loads up, um, we get uh, the actual results, which show that we have words that are actually good matches to the written. But we also have words that are kind of fuzzy and, and uh, but have the same meaning. Okay, um, we can configure the fuzziness of the search by going into this track and basically adjusting um, where the cutoff is of what is similar and what is not similar. So this is a histogram of all the scores um, of all the words with the keyword we searched for, and I can basically lower the threshold. And then we get uh, more terms, so even terms that are like less, uh, less similar, so that have a lower score, or can also go in the, in the other direction, obviously. And so this, this allows users to um, kind of interactively um, search for, for terms and, and, and get an idea of what might be similar terms that occur in the video. The second feature I want to focus on is face detection. We automatically detected all faces in our video corpus and analyzed which faces belong to the same person. An overview of this information for each video is available in the faces pane. And this gives a list of all the people that occur in that specific video. The extracted thumbnails you see of the people are picked by an algorithm we developed. It's, um, it, it tries to pick among all the images of a person in a video a, a good representative image based on various heuristic criteria such as the emotion and lighting and face size. So basically it tries to pick a thumbnail that, that gives a good, a good idea of, of, of who this person is or what this face represents. While the system can differentiate different people, most of the time the system doesn't really know or uh, understand the actual identity of the people. We therefore experimented with a simple annotation feature that would allow for incremental manual annotation of certain identities with names. For example, let's add a name to this person here. Um, let's go in here and um, annotate this identity, and then the system basically tracks this, this identity as with this name. 
We also have some preliminary emotion detection. The data is attached to um, specific faces. So first we get an overall statistics of all the emotions that are shown in this video. And we can also export signal tracks. Um, for example, if I click on that, on that happy emotion here for the news anchor, I get, I get this new track here, which gives um, the amount of happiness in the face of this news anchor. And uh, interesting enough, I can see that there's a peak at the beginning and at the end, uh, which corresponds to what is actually seen in, in the video if we, if we look at it. So if, if we look at that start, uh, this person is actually smiling. Um, if we look into the middle, not so much. Um, but if we look um, at, at the end, at the very end, um, we again get, get, a, get a more smiling face. So it kind of seems to, to, to cause one. And, and interestingly, um, the, the value seems to be higher in the sports um, section than in the, the news coverage section. So there seems to be a more happier expression here. Um, as this data turned out to be uh, quite noisy, so this emotion data here, and also sometimes other data we experimented with, uh, we, we, we added some basic filtering. So um, I can go into the track and change um, how, how smooth the signal is, and I can, I can basically change the filtering to be less smooth and allow more higher frequencies. Um, we can also discretize uh, the signal, which basically means um, uh, converting it into two discrete um, signals. And that, that would mean uh, we have the blue signal, which uh, corresponds to time spans that have a high um, uh, value, and the orange signal, which is basically the zero baseline. And this format can then be exported to timeline-based uh, software such as ELAN. Uh, that doesn't really know how to deal with scalar values, but knows how to deal with um, time-based uh, values. For visualizing the presence of faces in the video at certain times, we developed this timeline we already saw, as um, that are annotated with um, all the respective portraits of the people. And we can also enlarge this track and see in detail um, how faces co-occur. So basically, when, when, whenever we have the faces occupying the same timeline, then those faces um, are on the same uh, image. And obviously, not all the faces are tracked. Um, we have this um, indication with these red lines that show that, that there are actually more faces here that than are shown. Um, while this information is useful, um, we, we also tried to do a more distant view of this whole thing um, using a network. So if I go to the network pane and um, select the faces track, we get the network of all the faces that um, indicate which, which faces uh, occur at the same time in the video. And an edge between two nodes means that these faces occur at the same time. Um, the user can limit um, the graph uh, size um, by selecting a time span. For example, let's zoom out a bit and just take in, I don't know, this segment here, or maybe this segment. Okay, this is too short. Um, and in this way, I can, I can get only the faces that are um, visible in this time segment, and I get the, the face graph here. Um, I can also add other channels, so I can add text information. So I can, for example, add the spoken text uh, from, from the ASR track. If I do that, I now get the warning that there's too much data, so I need to do a smaller partition. Okay. Um, the idea here is that this will cluster not only the faces, but also the, also the words that occur at that um, time. So maybe use the OCR track. So then we can see that. Here's a cluster with Hardy, Christian Feldbericht, and one, one person, and here's another cluster. And so these clusters indicate that these persons occur together. Thank you for listening. This was our presentation of our experimental research setup Zoetrope. We hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please feel free to contact us.